Hello students. So today we will uh, see in this session about the racemic mixtures. What is racemic mixtures and how we can separate this racemic mixtures. What is actually this racemic uh, mixtures? So when uh, you take equal amounts of two enantiomers and mix together, so it will give you optically inactive form. So this uh, mixture will give you optically inactive form. These two enantiomers are not optically inactive. This is here actually optically active or this is a equimolar mixture then uh, that mixture is called a resin mixtures means uh, in another words we can say they are 50% uh, or uh, one more term is called resinate so such mixture is uh, denoted by a prefix plus minus or uh, dl so dl already we have seen this is called as dextro this is called this is called as levo so this enantiomers which is uh, equal mixtures they have uh, already we know that it has physical and chemical properties. Uh, their uh, properties are identical except their effect on PPL. So PPL only can uh, differentiate them as D or L. If it is rotating dextro, uh, right, right hand side, and if, it, if the molecule is rotating left hand side, it's your label. So D and L are optically active, while if you take the equal amount of mixture, so it becomes your optically inactive. And due to this uh, mixture of a uh, resin mixture, it is very difficult to uh, separate. Separation is very difficult and we cannot separate this uh, mixture by or ordinary uh, simple physical methods like uh, distillation, uh, either melting point and boiling point also same. So this is one of the problems. We will see how we can uh, resolve that problems. I have taken one example, lactic acid and tartaric acids. So this is an example of tartaric acid, true hydroxy, you can see uh, propanoic acids. So this is your D lactic acid and this is OH the right hand side. So this is your uh, L lactic acid, capital L lactic acid, OH is this side and uh, D means this OH is your left hand side. And this is a D lactic acid, this is small lactic acid due to the rotation of these two molecules. So this is in the form of your uh, wedge disc structures. Uh, this is the S uh, a structure of this one um, same lactic acid this is the R structure. I hope you know how to draw the S and R. Now we'll see how we will understand the lactic acid this one uh, resin mixtures with the help of this example. Suppose you have ten molecules of lactic acid, and out of four molecules is T form and four molecules L form. So these four molecules are equal in number. These are equal numbers, so we can say this equal number is nothing but the plus minus DL mixture or resin mixture. Or in terms of percentage, we can say it is a 50 feet percent. And this is the optically inactive. Why? Because uh, these two rotations will cancel each other. So this mixture is optically inactive, but uh, individually the D is optically active, L is optically active. So they are mixed, uh, they are the mirror images, and each in a similar, uh, each member D or L will rotate the PPL plane, uh, plane polarized light in an equal but opposite axis so it is optically inactive mixture optical inactives so why uh, we can say it is a uh, due to external compensation so this is equal in mixture so we can say uh, due to external uh, compensation and rotation caused by the molecules of one enantiomer is like a d is exactly cancelled by the equal in opposite uh, rotation that is the l and by the same number of molecules of the other enantiomer so rotation wise also they are equal and opposite now, uh, the process by which one enantiomer, like plus or minus, of the optically active compound, like D or L, is converted into a resin mixture, is called as racemization. This is our next term, racemization. And uh, it can be carried out. This racemization can be carried out in presence of heat. You can use light heat or light or any chemical reactions. So, this is uh, done by these three uh, different type of uh, conditions. Resolution of a resin mixture. How we can resolve a resin mixture? What is resolution? So in this uh, here the term of resolution means the separation of the resin mixture into their uh, component in enantiomer. Like D is different, uh, separated, and L is separate. D and L both are separated. Already we know enantiomers having the identical physical properties uh, like the solubilities, melting point, boiling point, and diastereomers have a different physical properties. So diastereomers, they have different physical properties. We can use a fraction distillation, but in case of enantiomers, due to identical physical properties, so we have to, it is very difficult to separate the enantiomer. So what is the uh, way to separate this enantiomer? 
So the enantiomers can't be separated by the usual techniques like a fractional distillation, crystallization, uh, chromatography, etc. But uh, it can react. The enantiomer can react with the chiral reagent. This reagent is uh, called as a resolving reagent. It should not be a chiral. It should not be a chiral, but it should be a chiral. Then when it will react with a, a chiral reagent, then you will get the mixture of diastereomers. And uh, when you get the diastereomers, then we can easily separate the these two enantiomers. There are many methods or you can say techniques to separate uh, these enantiomers uh, by converting to uh, diastereomers. One is your uh, mechanical method. So this mechanical method, uh, biological method, chemical method, uh, chromatographic separation. So what is mechan mechanical method using hand? So in this hand, uh, uh, this uh, technique was uh, first used by Louis Pesce. I hope you know the name of this person. Pesce is a very a famous uh, person, a personality in the world. So he applied this, uh, his uh, application, this mechanical method was only applicable to solid substance, uh, which can form the defined uh, crystal, well-defined crystals, okay. So it is applied only for the crystals and this work, his work was very tedious and time consuming. It is uh, taking by hand means we take too much time to separate the uh, D and by uh, having different type of uh, crystal structures. If with the help of tweezers, a pair of tweezers, you can separate the, suppose uh, he used the tartaric crystal. So the tartaric crystal is two types. So by using the tweezers, so we can separate this uh, tartaric crystal uh, because of their structures, uh, crystal structures. So it will take uh, too much time. So this method is also there, but it is time consuming. So it is not too much used. Next is biological method. So biological method, we can use the enzymes. This enzymes is produced by the microorganisms like uh, yeast. But in this case, what is the main disadvantage? Disadvantage that the half of the material is lost because of uh, uh, this uh, destruction of this uh, uh, that material by the enzymes. And second, the method is cannot be used if mixture is toxic to the microorganism. So if the mixture becomes toxic to the microorganism, so microorganism can die. So this is also a uh, problematic. Next is chemical method. Chemical method is the very best, is the very good method. So in this case, we can make the diastereomers, and once the diastereomers is done, we can easily separate the diastereomers because their physical property is different. Chromatographic separation. This is another technique. In this, uh, we use a special adsorbents like a starch, sugar, and quartz. So starch, sugar, quartz, they will adsorb one of the enantiomers. So second enantiomer can be separate because one enantiomer is adsorbed by the this is so uh, we'll discuss uh, only this one chemical methods so remaining is uh, not in our syllabus so this is the flow chart how we can separate the resting mixtures so first we'll take the resting mixtures then use the here uh, you can use any chiral reagent or you can say resolving reagent so uh, after taking a resolving reagent you will get a mixture of diastereomers and now this 2 dl which was in uh, equal mixtures now it is separated by the resolving agent then after separations, you will get two type of diastereomers, diastereomers 1, diastereomers 2. Then further, uh, you give acetic uh, hydrolysis of uh, diastereomers salt. And uh, after uh, hydrolysis, uh, you will get the, again, different type of uh, compound. Okay, so one is different, another, these are not enantiomers. So in which one enantiomer is separated, okay, and another is not enantiomer. And in this case, another enantiomer is separated uh, due to fractional distillation, and other one is, again, different so here we have enantiomers plus other uh, resolving agent so you can here enantiomers plus you will get again uh, resolving uh, reagent and in this case again you will get enantiomer plus uh, resolving reagent okay and uh, these are not uh, they are different compounds so we'll get one two three four four product let us understand through an example so here is uh, one enantiomer, you can see this both are enantiomers, how it is enantiomers, uh, so this is your um, nitrogen is, uh, atomic number is 1, so this is a 2 and this is a 3, so if you see the clockwise hydrogen in the vertical position, so it is your R, and second you can see well, this is the 1, this is the 2 and this is a 3, so you can see hydrogen in the vertical, but this is your S configuration, RNS, RNS is the enantiomer, and this is our resolving reagent reagent is again you can say this is your chiral this is totally chiral you can see four different groups there and uh, while uh, resolving uh, so taking this resolving reagent this must be your uh, acid because these two is bases so it will form a salt acid bases form a salt already we know this reaction 
So when they will react, so all the reactions will get this uh, two different type of uh, diastereomers. You can see. So uh, the water molecule is released. So this will combine form. So this is definitely R form. This is definitely S form. So this is S form is there. So this is resolving in this S form. You can see here. This is your one and two, and this is the three. So this is coming here like this one. So this is a uh, not S form. This will be your this clockwise direction. So this will be your R form. Okay. So this R form. So when you taking R form, so this definitely this becomes your R form. So this is R R and this is S form. And this will be your again your R form. So you can see R R and S R. So both these are the diastereomeric salts. Now uh, we can separate this uh, diastereomeric salts. Um, and after separation, then we can separate this uh, two salt by the fractional distillation. So take these salts and give the in different test tubes. So here one test tube is there. And in this case, another test tube is there. So again, in this way, you give the acidic hydrolysis by using any HCl. So it will HCl or uh, so and with water. So what will happen? These two will get separated. Okay, so here after separation, you will get the again. Uh, this is your one enantiomer, and this is your resolving uh, reagent. Again, you get the uh, second enantiomer. This is enantiomer number one, and this is enantiomer number two. And again, you will get the resolving reagent. So in this way, after distillation, you get the two different product, and there uh, uh, you can uh, separate these two product by the fractional uh, distillation. And again, you can separate these two by a fractional distillation. So uh, new enantiomers uh, are uh, recovered from the racemate and resolving agent is also get separated and uh, recovered.